Utah's Moab country is known for its incredible arches and canyon lands. But it is also on a railroad timetable known as the Cane Creek Branch. Once a week, a Union Pacific local out of Grand Junction, Colorado services a potash plant located along the Colorado River just east of Canyonlands State Park. Take a look at this amazing branch line. The icy book cliffs rise above the old hamlet of Thompson Springs, illuminated by the cool winter sun. The town began life in the 1880s as a station stop on the DNRGW. Nearby coal mines and cattle ranches benefited the town in the early 20th century. Passenger trains no longer stop at Thompson, and the town was bypassed in the 1970s when nearby I-70 was completed. Empty motels line the quiet street that once was a bustling Highway 6. A few times a day, the quiet is interrupted by passing trains. This morning, UP 7917 is in charge of the Potash local and has taken the siding at Thompson to pick up some additional covered hoppers before heading down the Cane Creek branch. The Cane Creek Branch is a must-stop for visiting rail fans. Located between Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park, the railroad traverses a landscape that looks to be right out of a classic John Ford Western. Rugged high mesas and deep canyons carved out of Utah's red sandstone create a scene that dwarfs any train passing by. Let's take some time and explore this amazing branch line. The Cane Creek Branch joins the Green River Sub at Brendel, milepost 533.3. The Potash Local currently runs on Sundays, departing Grand Junction around 9 a.m. On weekdays, one might catch a contaminated dirt train working between Brendel and MK near the east portal of Bootlegger Tunnel. The train hauls radioactive tailings from a site of a uranium mill near Moab, which was closed in 1984. The tailings are being buried in a safe location deep inside the Book Cliffs and away from the Colorado River. UP 7902 leads the empty dirt train onto the Cane Creek Branch in the late afternoon. The dirt trains began running in 2009 with the goal of removing 11 million tons by the year 2028. The extra traffic has benefited the single customer branch line, which now sees traffic almost daily. After leaving Brendel, trains travel through Crescent Flat, then climb a short 1.1% grade to Hilltop. The Potash local ascends the hill as the tracks parallel Highway 191.
The Denver and Rio Grande Western completed the Cane Creek Branch in 1964 to serve a potash plant at the end of track. The 37.4-mile line drops nearly 1,000 feet in elevation as it descends into the Colorado River Canyon. We catch up with the dirt train again as it crests hilltop in the last rays of sunlight. Behind the train is part of the western edge of Arches National Park. The LaSalle Mountains rise above the train as it continues down grade through Klondike Flat. Continuing railroad west, the scenery begins to change as the local approaches a short grade up to 7 Mile. Seven Mile is a short siding and spur track located at milepost 21.3. Red clay and sandstone cliffs begin to dominate the landscape as UP 7917 blows for a crossing at the mouth of Seven Mile Canyon. After passing 7 Mile, the tracks enter a deep cut and trains slow to 15 miles per hour looking out for rocks. The 7917 exits the cut at milepost 24 with its 22 car train.
dusting of snow from the previous night highlights the texture of the red rock above the train as it begins the long descent to the Colorado River. The local is now approaching MK and soon will disappear into the east bore of Bootlegger Tunnel. We again meet the Colorado River at the base of Poison Spider Mesa. The 1,450-mile-long waterway winds through seven U.S. and two Mexican states before emptying into the Gulf of California. Following the river downstream, we come to the mouth of Bootlegger Canyon. When the Rio Grande built through here in the late 1960s, they tapped into some of the most striking country on the entire system. The huge sandstone walls are carefully sculpted with the tools of wind, water, and time. We are at milepost 31, near the mouth of Bootlegger Canyon. UP 7917 appears through another large cut as it continues downgrade to potash. On a different day, we caught UP 1510 with a shorter local as it passes beneath the red cliffs of the Colorado River Canyon. The potash mine is located along the northwest bank of the Colorado River, around 20 miles west of Moab. It was built by the Texas Gulf Sulphur Company in 1963, and today is owned by Intrepid Potash in Denver, Colorado. The mine's natural surroundings are nothing less than breathtaking. But that shouldn't be too surprising, given the proximity to both Arches and Canyonlands National Parks. Still. It's hard to believe that this is a setting for a rail yard where crews come weekly to do their routine task of switching cars. Transitioning from winter to spring, the color of the landscape seems to change dramatically, appearing even more vivid than before, as UP 1510 arrives at Potash with today's local. The train shimmers in the midday sun as the canyon's temperature climbs into the 90s.
The Intrepid mine uses a combination of solution mining and solar evaporation to extract potash. River water is pumped into the mine, dissolving the potash into a solution called a brine, which is sent to evaporation ponds where the sun does the rest. The sun shines in this location nearly every day, making this an ideal operation. Once a week, the UP brings empty cars to be set out and picks up loads to take back to Grand Junction. Several cars are spotted around the facility to be used as needed. In less than an hour, the local is ready to head back east. power slowly makes its way to the east end of the yard to pick up the loads. The former Rio Grande unit number 1344 is now the leader as the power is switched to the siding to pick up the cars. In no time, the Potash local begins its return trip to Grand Junction, and we give chase, following it through the canyon. The train enters Bootlegger Canyon as it heads up the 1.2% grade. The canyon got its name from Bootlegger Creek, which flows down from Poison Spider Mesa. Hiking into the canyon, the west bore of Bootlegger Tunnel comes into view, 
boring 7,061 feet through the heart of Poison Spider Mesa. Officially named Moab Tunnel, it is the longest railroad tunnel in the state of Utah. Hiking up nearby Rainbow Ridge, one gets a different perspective of the area as we look over the canyon from another nearby geological feature known as the Corona Arch. The 105 by 140 foot opening is located on the slick rock bench above Bootlegger Canyon. During our winter visit to the Cane Creek Branch, we took the 1.5 mile hike to the arch while the UP7917 crew was busy performing their switching duties at Potash. This gave us the opportunity to shoot the train through the Corona Arch as it returned through Bootlegger Canyon. The train disappears below us as it tunnels back through Poison Spider Mesa. We pick up the UP 1344 again during our springtime visit and follow the train back east from Seven Mile to Brendel. You have been watching an excerpt from Across the Utah Desert, which is available on DVD, high-definition Blu-ray, and digital download with Vimeo On Demand. If you would like to purchase the full two-hour program, visit 7ideaproductions.com. There is a link in the description below. And to see more content like this, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to watch more videos added weekly. From all of us at 7idea Productions, thanks for watching.